Hi, this is Bob Wetterman. Today I'm going to talk about the IPC A630 specification that was just released in September of 2013. Now the spec calls for, uh, in its title, the acceptability standard for the manufacturer inspection and testing of electronic enclosures. So, you know, in the 610, we have the printed circuit boards and the acceptability criteria for them. In the 600, for the PCBs, uh, whether that's rigid board or flex or a combination thereof. And for 620, for wire and harness and cable assemblies. But the 630 is the spec that was just released for the testing of uh, electronic uh, enclosures. And uh, like when the 610 came out, you can see this spec is very thin, but it's a great start. I think the two chairmen, um, Richard Rumas and Eddie Hofer, one from uh, Honeywell, one from Rockwell Collins, did a great job starting with some of the military specs. And uh, the committee was uh, did some great work on, the, on this particular spec, just to kind of get it over the goal line and get it started. But it's broken down into eight specific areas. Um, but before going into those areas, so you don't have to read the whole spec, um, you know, there's some general guidelines in the spec, just like in the 600, the 610, and the 620. We talk about the classes, class one, class two, class three. It defines rework processes, repair processes, brazing processes, um, and welding. And just like those other specifications, we have the the target conditions, the acceptability conditions, the process indicators, and the defects. So very similar in structure to the other acceptability documents. So the first section is applicable documents. So here the committee brought together IPC documents as well as other military documents uh, that were ready in place. Then there's general facility requirements, things like ESD, things like lighting, uh, controls and calibrations. Then in the third section, uh, the spec goes into materials. So things like polymers are discussed, things like welds and uh, brazing specs. Uh, the AWS specifications are referenced here. Uh, then we go inside the cabinet and the reference is made to wiring cabling. So the IPCA 620 specifications. And then also how the cables and wires are held together inside the enclosure. So that's all part of section three. In section four, we have the acceptability of the surface finishes. So the gloss, pox, color, gloss, and things of that nature. Then we get into the enclosure assembly itself. Uh, the sixth section is hardware. So what kind of hardware goes um, are in and around the enclosure? Things like hasps, clasps, uh, things like hinges, rivets, uh, weep holes, um, and then all the tooling and equipment uh, for those enclosures. Um, then it also gets in this section on rivets. What kind of rivets, the, the acceptability criteria for those rivets, uh, you know, what the shaft should look like, what a flush rivet should look like, and the like. Section seven goes through marking and labeling requirements. How far away should you see the marking and labeling requirements? Where should they be located? What kind of surface prep is required to put those labels onto the enclosure? And then finally in section eight, we talk about testing and verification in the spec. That's a very uh, thin part of the book. But again, great start to it. And I really see this thing uh, moving forward like the other specs and eventually become part of the certification program. So this has been Bob Wetterman at Best talking about the IPC A630 spec. Thanks for listening.